how to implement identity authentication and authorization in ASP.NET Core 8. This video will guide you through setting up a secure authentication for web application. Let's dive right in. Start by creating a new ASP.NET Core project. Choose the web app template to get started. Assign a name to your project, then click Next. Select the .NET 8 framework, then click Create to set up the project. Please wait while your project is being created. Let's take a look at the default scaffold in a newly created ASP.NET Core project. By default, the project includes Home Controller. The Home Controller also comes with an index view and a privacy view. Now let's add the necessary NuGet package. Launch the NuGet package manager, then search for the package Entity Framework Core. Select the package and click install. Select a compatible version. Since I'm using .NET 8, we can use the version of Entity Framework Core that supports .NET 8. Next, search for Entity Framework Core SQL Server. Select the package and click Install. Lastly, search for Entity Framework Core Tools. Select the package and click install. Now click on the installed tab to verify that the package has been successfully installed. Open the app settings.json file and configure the database connection string. Add a connection string under the connection strings section. If you're unsure about the format to use in a connection string, visit frequentspot.com and search for connection string. Copy the connection string template from there. Be sure to replace it with your local database connection details. Create a new folder named data in the root of your project. Then add a class file name application db context. This file will define your database context. Extend the class to inherit from identity db context. Define the application DB context constructor. The constructor initializes the application DB context by passing the DB context option to the base of the DB context class. This allows the configuration options, such as the connection string, to be used when setting up the database context. Open program.cs and register the required services. Add a DB context to register the DB context. Then add the add identity to register the identity services. 
and don't forget to call the app that use authorization and add app that use authentication. Now open the Get Package Manager console. Run migrations and update your database. This sets up the tables required for identity. Once the migration file is created, you'll see all the tables required by the identity framework. Execute update database to apply the migration. As mentioned earlier, we specify the database name in AppSettings.json. If the database does not exist, the migration process will automatically create it for us. Here is the ASP.user table, which contains all the details for all registered user. Here is the ASP.NET user rules table, which links user to their assigned rule. Next, create a new controller name account controller in your project to handle user authentication and registration. Inject user manager and sign in manager into your account controller to manage user registration, authentication, and sign ins. Add methods for handling user registration. Then create a register view model class with properties like email, password, confirm password. Return to account controller and resolve register view model error. Notice that the newly created user has been assigned the user rule. Next, design a views for register in your views folder. I already have prepared the UA design for register page, so I'll just simply copy and paste it to replace the generated scaffold. Add a login method to handle user login. The method should accept the user credentials, validate them, and sign in the user if the credentials are correct. Then create a login view model class with properties such as email and password. Should resolve the error in the login method. Create a necessary razor views for the login action, including a form that binds the login view model to collect the user's email and password. Inside the account controller, create a logout method to sign the user out of the application. In the home controller, add an admin dashboard method secured with the admin rule attribute. 
add a user dashboard method secured with the user rule attribute. Next, add an authorized method. Now create an admin dashboard views and views home for admin only content. Create a user dashboard view inside views slash home for authenticated users. Create an authorized view inside view slash home to show unauthorized messages. Add a seeder in program.cs to initialize default rules for the identity framework. Run the application to execute the seeder. Open SQL Server and verify if the rules were inserted in the ASP.NET rule table. As we added the user rule inside the register method, this means that a newly registered user will automatically be assigned the user rule. Configure the application cookie in program.cs to redirect unauthorized users to the unauthorized view and redirect an authenticated user to the login page. Run the application and register a user. By default, the user will be assigned to the user rule. Try to directly access admin dashboard. This should redirect you to the login page. One last modification. Open layout.chtml and modify the menu to include options for login, register, and layout. We added a condition to display the admin link if the user's rule is admin, otherwise it shows user link. Go ahead and register a new user to verify that the user is assigned a user rule automatically and that everything is functioning as expected. After successful registration, you will be redirected to the user dashboard based on the hard-coded rule assigned during registration. If you try to access that bin dashboard manually, you'll be redirected to an authorized view. Log out the user to test the logout functionality. Next, test the login function. If you open the ASP.NET user table, you will see the newly created user. And that's it. You now have a functional identity authentication and authorization system in ASP.NET Core. For detailed step-by-step -step guide in the source code, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.